welcome to Community Checkup with Delta Dental of Tennessee. We have Missy Acosta here. So happy to see you once again. Yeah, great to see you. I feel like I've been really lucky lately. I've gotten to see you a few times with a couple of the events that's been happening. And one that we're touching on right off the bat is the Governor's Early Literacy Foundation dinner that was held recently and what an amazing evening yes. and i just want to go ahead and say congratulations for the recognition for delta dental because you guys have been instrumental in getting the books into the hands of children thank you we've um you know it's been 20 years it started as governor's books from birth foundation under governor bredesen mm -hmm. and 20 years ago bredesen had an idea actually it was based on dolly pardon's idea uh, Sevier County, Dolly started paying for books for kids from birth till they started kindergarten to help improve literacy in Sevier County. And, um, you know, she's been doing that for many years. And Bredesen found out about it, wanted to make this statewide. So 20 years ago, the state legislature passed the legislation. Uh, the state pays for half of it, and then the communities have to raise the other half of that support. And where companies like Delta Dental of Tennessee, Nissan, Dollar General um, have come together to help those communities where they have a little more trouble trying to raise the funds to have that program in their, in their community. So it is all over the state and millions of books have been handed out. How wonderful that is. And I also wanna mention, you know, of course, those who contribute to this, um, hats off to you guys for doing that. But the big part of the night happened to be the 10 third graders that were there for the dinner to be recognized for 10 under 10. Yes. And these third graders were uh, submitted their application or were there, it was submitted They're, by the teachers. How did that work? Uh, the teachers submit the application okay. and it's recognizing children under 10 years old who have made, have overcome obstacles in their literacy journey. So, you know, where they've struggled before and now they're becoming great achievers by the third grade. And it's, it's such a wonderful program. And that's one thing that's been so cool about our relationship with the Governor's Early Literacy Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, our CEO is on their board of directors and we really are able to get involved with the organization. So, I mean, I remember the early days working with them um, kind of figuring out what, what are the questions? How do we set up the application? And do you think this will really work? And I mean, it, it's amazing. They're recognizing 10 kids, but there are hundreds of applications that come in, which just represents how, how much our education system is really focusing on literacy. And those teachers are the champions for these kids. Very true. And they were all so very proud. The kids were proud. Teachers were proud. Parents and guardians were very proud. We were able to connect, unfortunately, not with all 10 recipients of this year's 10 under 10, but we did connect with one. His name is Mason Kirkland. He's a third grader out of Shelby County, Tennessee. Here's a little bit from Mason, his third grade teacher and his mom. It was very exciting. I got to meet the governor, got to meet nine other children from all over the state. And yeah, it was really exciting. He sought out opportunity to grow. And that's what made me notice him right away was, how can I be a better reader? How can I be a better writer? Is there something else I can do? And that to me is a real sign of someone that's very driven to, um, to improve and to continue to grow and excel. I think once he started having fun with it and we could do it fun as a family, it kind of relieved some of that pressure and then, um, we get to read together. One of my goals is to um, maybe excel more in reading and maybe get a good job. And I'm thinking about me an art teacher because I'm good at art, math, and reading. Every day we see students that can overcome those challenges with some hard work and some encouragement goes a long way as well. We can't thank Mason, his mom and teacher enough for sitting down with us to share just a little bit more about his reading and why he was recognized. Where can parents and teachers go to learn a little bit more about the Governor's Early Literacy Foundation, the work being done and how they can submit applications? Um, sure, the information, the website is governorsfoundation.org. There's lots of information on there. And really, if, if you know a, a woman who is pregnant, the mother of a small child, make sure those kids get signed up so that they get these books. Because I, I know with my kids growing up, 
it was that they love going to the mailbox and getting that book of their own and you know something coming out of the mail that has their name on it especially when they start recognizing how to read they see their name and they get so excited oh i love it thank you so much for sharing that but we're not done you have a lot more going on one area is with the red cross yes i was invited a few weeks ago to give an award to their volunteer of the year his name is stephen durham he has spent over 40,000 hours volunteering for the Red Cross, which is just amazing. Oh, wow. He's done that uh, locally. If there's a home fire, he might go out to, and represent the Red Cross locally. He's been deployed um, w for major disasters, hurricanes, tornadoes, things like that. So, I mean, he really, truly is a Tennessean with a servant's heart. And your Red Cross donation, not only your volunteer, volunteer hours can make a difference, but giving blood can make a huge difference. Absolutely. So uh, three it, lives being saved with one donation. Yes, and sometimes even more. If you um, are able, they can do, they can take out the red blood cells mm -hmm. and put plasma back in so they can do what's called power red donations. Okay. Uh, it's the equivalent of two pints of blood donated in one sitting. So That's huge. It, it, it really does make a difference. Uh, and so we are so lucky to be able to hear from Stephen and we're going to hear from him now. I've been working all my life and now it's time for me to give back to the community. How many hours I think I have? 40, 40,000 from total from 2018 to now. Volunteering is something that is comes from the heart. Getting up and going into I work in a shelter and getting up and seeing everybody and talking to them and listening to their stories, what they have to say. I remember going to Hurricane Michael and seeing the homes had been destroyed. When I left there, seeing they started rebuilding, that right there is knowing that there is a good reason for Red Cross being there best day of volunteering. I was in a shelter and I was visiting with a gentleman. He started showing signs of a stroke. So I decided to go ahead and call 911. And they got him to the hospital, couldn't find out. He had actually a stroke. And his wife was having a stroke too. They were actually in a house that they wanted to stay into with no heat. Back in March of 89, I was hit by a car. I was walking. After that, my mother said, Steve, you're here for a purpose. And this is my purpose, is to volunteer and give back to the community. We have the pleasure of having the CEO from the American Red Cross. We have Joel Sullivan with us. Mr. Sullivan, thank you so much for giving us your time. You bet. I'm glad to be here. You know, Missy and I, we were talking about, you know, the importance of volunteering and someone who has given a lot of volunteer hours, Mr. Steven, who we saw a little bit from. But from your perspective, since you've been in your position since 2010, what difference is made through volunteering? I started off volunteering in 06 and then became an employee in 2010. Okay. So that's how important volunteering was for me. It motivated me to, to get a job in doing this business. But 90% of what we do is done by volunteers in all lines of service that we participate in. So volunteering is the difference between someone being helped and not being helped. And so we look for volunteers who have a passion for helping people. And you really see that in the heart of your volunteers. I do want to touch on something that was a recent anniversary for the Nashville area, and that was the flood of 2010. How many volunteers did you have turn out for that, and how important was it to have them there? 70% of the volunteers that participated in the floods of 2010 came from Tennessee. We are the volunteer state, by the way. True. So that helped out tremendously. But I believe there was upwards of 500 volunteers that participated in that. And the tasks that they were doing could have been media and communications, doing sheltering so people had a place to stay, doing feeding, doing logistics, going out and doing damage assessment to find out where the damage was and how they could participate and get that information to the people that needed it. There's so many jobs within the Red Cross that there's a job for everybody. So there may be a role for you out there. So there, and the, correct me if I'm wrong, Tennessee is broken up into East, Middle, and West. Correct. Correct. 
how does someone in those areas reach out? Who do they reach out to for the American Red Cross to become a volunteer? How does that process work? So the quickest way is to apply at redcross.org. Okay. There's a volunteer portal there that you can go in and put in an application. In Tennessee, there are eight chapters across our state. And once you identify with a chapter and begin volunteering with that chapter, they find out what your interests are. We share what opportunities are available for you. Mm -hmm and then we match you up. You might start in one area and go, I don't really like this. We'll move you to another area so that your interest is matched with your skill set and the job that the Red Cross needs doing. And a lot of people volunteer starting out with the disaster action teams. And that's where you volunteer with a team that goes out in the middle of the day, middle of the night, whenever a home or apartment burns, the Red Cross is there. And for any other disaster, I have to think of the one, the tornadoes that hit our area, um, last year right you know volunteers were there from the american red cross for someone who's like i want to give my time but i don't have a lot of time to give is that okay absolutely every every time that you give every hour that you volunteer makes a difference it might be that you come and sort the pins that we wear to go out into the different chapters to distribute it may be that you're supporting those and putting them in envelopes. It may be that you come in and you print out thank you letters that we sign and send to donors. It may be if you're a volunteer that has a little time that you come in every 56 days and give a pint of blood and save a life. And that, I mean, makes a huge difference. Let's touch on the volunteer that we were highlighting today. Stephen, are you familiar with him or do you know him personally? Stephen Durham is amazing. Oh. I've been on many fire calls with him and it's not just fires, it's all the disasters that happen. It could be a bombing, it could be a fire, it could be a tornado, uh, but Stephen is always there. He understands the work that we do. He encourages others to join him and he's given thousands of hours just in the five or six years that he's been with us. That is huge, and I'm sure that's infectious for those that are around him. They will see him give, and they want to continue to give. Absolutely. He leads by example. He's in the charge with them. Oh, I love it. Is there anything from the American Red Cross that we may not be aware of as just your general public? So the general public's not aware of everything that the Red Cross does. I guess that's, yes, you're right. You know, they may know us for blood. Mm -hmm. we, we need your blood. We need to collect 13,000 units of blood every day to meet the need across the nation. Uh, we provide more than 40% of the blood for the nation. A lot of folks will know us for disasters because if you turn on the TV, there was a home fire last night and the Red Cross was there. Mm -hmm. So we need the disaster folks. We also, we were born on the battlefield. So service to the armed forces is very important. If you have a loved one or a family member or a neighbor who needs to get home or get information while they're deployed, mm -hmm. They can come to the Red Cross, we verify that information, and we contact that service member, and if need be, get them home. So that's important. And then our international services, we reunify families that were separated due to war or famine around the world with all the other Red Cross, Red Crescent societies. So that's pretty important as well. And then most people can also relate to our training services which is CPR, AED, infant, infant CPR, babysitter training, pet first aid. If you've never had pet first aid and given mouth to snout, you haven't lived yet. I had no idea. Absolutely. Aubrey Dwight, and where can we, we can get all this information on your website? On the website, redcross.org, or you can call your local chapter and they'll be happy to get you engaged. Fantastic, everything is really right at your fingertips. And let's talk about the blood donation part of this. There's an app, it makes it incredibly easy and really cuts down on the time that you spend to get in to give that blood, am I correct? Absolutely, the best part about the blood donor app is, is that it tracks your health history. So every time you give, it's tracking your vital signs. Mm -hmm. And then once you've got those vital signs, when you get your annual physical, you can share that with your doctor and say, here's what happens every time I give blood. But my favorite part of the app is when you give, it tracks your pint of blood's history. And so you know where it's going, when it's being processed, when it's ready to be distributed, and then where it goes. And on top of that, you get an email that says, your blood's on its way to X hospital to save a life. I um, love that. That really is a cool aspect. Two final questions for you. For those who say, you know what, I give blood, but I want it to stay local. What can you say to that? So most folks do want to give blood and keep it local. And for the most part, it does stay local. Okay. But we, when there's a need that arises, when somebody needs blood, the blood has to get there. And the person that needs that blood wants it, regardless of where it comes from. And I think if most people saw someone in need, 
outside of their area, they would want their blood to go help that person. So the majority of the blood does stay locally, but some does leave and go to hospitals that are in need, which really is a patient in need. 100% and that is someone's family member and you never know if it's your family member that could be out of state that would need that blood. Last question for you, Mr. Sure. Sullivan. Is there something we didn't touch on that we need to know about? Volunteering is so easy. You come in, you meet the people, you see the need, we train, we make sure that you have the skill set and the training you need to participate and you get started. Once you're signed up and we do a background check because we gotta make sure everyone's safe to participate in the public, you're ready to go. You can go to that home fire. You can start signing letters. You can start doing tr more training. And the best part is, once you're trained, you can deploy across the nation to disasters if that's your interest in disasters. And training is, you make it relatively easy. Training is very easy, yes. And most of it's online, so you can do it at your leisure. Very true. Uh, Mr. Joel Sullivan, CEO with the American Red Cross here for the state of Tennessee, our volunteer state. Thank you so much, sir, for your time. We very much appreciate what you guys do. You bet. Thank you. You're welcome. Stick with us. We'll be right back. Nashville Sounds baseball is back in Hit City for the 2024 season. Spend your nights and weekends at the ballpark with weekly giveaways, fireworks shows, throwback deals, live music, and more. Top talent will take the field at First Horizon Park against the AAA Minnesota Twins, Baltimore Orioles, Atlanta Braves, St. Louis Cardinals, Cincinnati Reds, and more. Tickets start at just $10 and are available now at NashvilleSounds.com. We will see you in Hit City. At Delta Dental of Tennessee, we know our success begins and ends with providing superior quality service, and that includes serving those who need it most. This year, we're celebrating 25 years of giving back to the community we call home. Delta Dental, along with our Smile 180 Foundation, supports Tennessee's dental colleges and oral health education, children's hospitals, free and reduced cost dental clinics, and other like-minded charities. Here's to the next 25 plus years of ensuring healthy smiles. Welcome back to our community checkup with Delta Dental of Tennessee and Missy Acosta, who does so much for Delta Dental. And I get to say that because every time I'm with you and there are people around, they know exactly who you are because you have done so much work with Delta Dental of Tennessee. So thank you for all that you do. I just have well, to say you. that once again. You're very welcome. We're getting ready to highlight big brothers, big sisters, yes. which are just instrumental in changing the lives of young boys and girls. Yes, this is one that's close to my heart because I've been serving on the board of directors for a number of years now. Um, immediate past president for a couple more months. Wow. Uh, and, you know, it's it's been so rewarding because when I was a kid, I remember those relationships with older adults who became mentors for me, you know, in high school, not really knowing what you want to do and, you know, really kind of fumbling your way through life. When that adult leans in and gives you that extra attention and gives you advice, it's different from hearing it from a parent. And so it, it's, I love Big Brothers Big Sisters because they are helping to provide that same opportunity for so many boys and girls across the whole Middle Tennessee area. They're not just here in Nashville. They, they really are, you know, a, a multi-county operation. Who was instrumental in your life when you were younger? Who was that um, one person? There, there are several. Uh, I started interning in the music business when I was in high school. Okay. And so the, the folks at Network Inc. back then, Ben Payne, Jenny Bowler, Liz Thiels, they all had tremendous impact on me. Uh, and I can remember Michael McCall was a banner reporter back then. And, you know, I can remember working with them because I'm, I'm in the music business and I'm doing what's a dream come true. And I can remember talking to Michael and asking him, where should I go to college, MTSU or Belmont? And he said, Missy, you've got your contacts in the industry, go away and grow up. Oh. And that, that was a pivotal point in my life because I did, I, rather than pursuing a music business education, I got a general business education, public relations, went to Xavier in Cincinnati. I, Michael should be very proud. I went away, I grew up, came back. And you know, without that broader education, I wouldn't be where I am today at Delta Dental. So that, that really did, was advice that changed my life. And 
every day there are mentors doing the same thing for these kids with big brothers, big sisters. And speaking of those mentors and those littles, we get to see a little bit of them getting a tour of Geodis Park, their fun event. Tell us a little bit what's going down there. Um, sure, the, the big graduation, it's a big celebration that they do every year with the, the kids that are getting ready to graduate high school, their parents, their, their bigs that have been a part of their lives. Sometimes the, the, the bigs come into the kids' lives at eight, nine, 10 years old. And so now these kids are graduating high school. They've, they've helped these kids grow up and mature. And so to be able to have this big celebration, uh, the folks at Geodis Park, um, the, the soccer club, and Geodis, the company, have been very instrumental in making this such a great celebration. Oh, well, let's take a look now at the fun that was had at Geodis Park with the Bigs, Littles, and their families. Hi, my name is Tonight is a night that we bring um, all of our high school seniors together to celebrate their incredible accomplishment and cheer them on as they graduate from the Big Brothers Big Sisters program. We want them to know that there's an entire community of people who are invested in them, cheering them on, who have their back, and that we're excited for the future in their next chapter. And Anita, you've been a big of destiny now since she was 12 and you're getting ready to graduate, is that correct? Yes, ma'am, that's correct. First for you, Destiny, tell me what this program has meant to you and what it's done for your life. Oh, uh, this program has meant a lot to me. It has helped me grow in so many ways. And with the help of my bigs, it's been a breeze. I saw her gain self-control. She was already respectful. I saw her have ability to listen, you know, and Anita has came in and helped me mold her 100% and keeping her grounded and rooted in Christ. You know, I got in this thinking that, okay, you're gonna help someone. Not sure, you know, what you were getting into, but um, instead it kind of, I've always said, the wheels have kind of turned. It, it enhanced uh, my life to meet this dynamic young woman and her, her family who just, uh, you know, kind of, they welcome me in. You know, you got to build that trust. You got to build that rapport. And so I know that was very important to her mom and what she wanted this relationship to be and what she wanted her to get out of it. So, but uh, it's been transformative to me as well. How would you say that this mentorship has been impactful in your life? As an early graduate in high school. Life is a community sport. We're not meant to do it alone. So step up and invest in the life of a young person. What a great night for the bigs, the littles. And like I said, their family's there on hand for them to not only take a tour of Geodis Park, but just be recognized, scholarships being given out. What a cool, cool experience for them. Yes, and Big Brothers Big Sisters has been given a spotlight too with the NFL. Oh, that's huge. Um, they have a great relationship with Big Brothers Big Sisters of America. And here in Nashville, um, they invited Big Brothers Big Sisters to be a part of the big draft mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago. And, um, you know, it, they were told by the Titans there might be four or 5,000 people there. 28,000 people registered to come out to Nissan Stadium and watch the draft on the Jumbotrons. That is huge, and that's a lot of people. Yeah, talk about a uh, traffic uh, situation there. It was Nissan. almost game day traffic <laughs> around the stadium that day. But it was wonderful because it gave us such an opportunity to get more exposure with young adults. And, right. and that's who we need to be mentors for these kids. 100% all throughout Middle Tennessee, if you're a young adult or if you have an interest in connecting with the little to be that mentor, please do that. How can people yes. do a uh, register for that? The website is mentorakid.org. Again, that's mentor, M-E-N-T-O-R, a kid. Org. Um, you can go online, learn more about the organization, and go ahead and sign up. It's not that difficult. It's an hour a week in a lot of cases. Um, they also have some programs. They have sports buddies mm -hmm. where it's uh, they have programming already developed. So you don't have to think about what would I do with this child. It's already set up for you. Ah, uh, wonderful. Don't go anywhere when we come back. We're going to see the happenings at Belmont College of Medicine and how Delta Dental of Tennessee was involved with that. We thrive under the lights. A city of performers. Putting on one heck of a show. Headlining night after night. Welcome to Smashville.
At Delta Dental of Tennessee, we know our success begins and ends with providing superior quality service, and that includes serving those who need it most. This year, we're celebrating 25 years of giving back to the community we call home. Delta Dental, along with our Smile 180 Foundation, supports Tennessee's dental colleges and oral health education, children's hospitals, free and reduced cost dental clinics, and other like-minded charities. Here's to the next 25 plus years of ensuring healthy smiles. Welcome back to Community Checkup with Delta Dental of Tennessee. We have Missy Acosta with us, the brand strategist with Delta Dental. Always a pleasure to sit down next to her to talk about the happenings and just how involved Delta Dental is here in our Tennessee area. And next up, we're talking about an event that was held at Belmont College of Medicine. I'm so curious to what went down there. Yes, um, Belmont has started a College of Medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, dean Anderson Spickert has been selected to be the dean. And for several years, they've been doing uh, the Tennessee Healthcare Hall of Fame. And the funds raised from that are for scholarships for students for the College of Medicine. Um, this past year, Dr. Phil Wink, our former CEO, was recognized uh, and, and inducted into the Tennessee Healthcare Hall of Fame. And we were able to sit down with Dean Spickert and talk to him um, about how important oral health is to your overall health. And he got it. He was right there with us. and. Um, one of the things that we were able to talk with him about is uh, rather than our funds going towards the scholarships, we are going to be endowing a speaker series so that every year the, the medical students will have someone come in and talk with them about oral health and its relation to the overall health. Okay. So this, as far as we know in the state of Tennessee, this might be the first time this has really been done in the medical, medical school. So... What is that excitement like for everyone who's a part of this? I mean, are they excited about getting this information out? I mean, surely they are. Absolutely. Um, we're excited because this is something that we've been really trying to work toward for years mm -hmm. and just helping everybody understand the correlation between oral health and overall health. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it, a lot of times that first line of defense is so important. And it, when you're going in to see the doctor, as an adult or having taking your child to the doctor, mm -hmm. if they have the ability to look in the mouth and see there, there's a lot that could be happening there that could impact mm -hmm. what's going on in the rest of the body. So teaching those doctors early on is so important. And we're excited that Dean Spickard is really picking up that mantle. Uh, that is wonderful. And we're all, you know, all have the ability to learn a little bit more. And you can do that by going to the website of Delta Dental of Tennessee. What can people find out there by looking on your website? Uh, well, we're celebrating 25 years of philanthropy, so there's a lot of information on our website about that. Um, we have a wealth of information of, uh, related to that oral health education. So if you are, you know, you're curious about something, um, what, everything from bad breath to cavities to what all is entailed with doing a root canal. Um, so you can find that information on the website, videos for kids to help them learn how to brush their teeth. We have a lot of resources there. It's deltadentaltn.com. And I just wanted to touch on that one more time. You can find a lot more information in our first episode that we did for Community Checkup because we really did focus a bit more on those videos and how that can not only help you, but your little ones out there. And of course, we're looking forward now to the month of June for our next show because we're highlighting quite a bit there as well, including Smile Power Week and then the sign up for Kids Dental Day. What is yes. Kids Dental Day so they know how much fun it is? Yes, Kids Dental Day is, uh, we do that in partnership with the Nashville Sounds. Mm -hmm. uh, Hope Smiles is going to be there. We're going to have lots of dental chairs so the kids coming in can get dental checkups. And then we've also partnered with Samaritan's Feet and we're so excited about this because the kids will not only get dental screenings and, and possibly dental care if they need it, they'll also get free socks and tennis shoes just in time for school. Oh, I love it. And it really, truly is a fun day. A lot happening there at the uh, First Horizon Park where the Nashville Sounds play. Thanks for joining us here for Community Checkup with Delta Dental of Tennessee. I know we always, I always enjoy you stopping by. Missy, I know you do as well. Any final thoughts before they leave us? Uh, just as you're getting out there for the summer, you want to make sure that your smile is selfie ready. You're going to be getting those <laughs> vacation pictures. Um, so just make sure that you take care of your teeth, get your dental visit if you need to, and, and be ready for big smiles this summer. Oh, I love it, Missy. Thank you so much. Until the next time, we'll see you in June.
dental and vision. We love your whole face. See us at DeltaDentalTN.com.